This video is brought to you by Mammoth Headwear. One size fits big. Hey everybody, it's Jimmy from the DIY and Digital, and today we're designing and printing this in scale house. Welcome back everybody. Today is a big day for the channel, specifically the 3D portion of the channel. I am designing my first house and it's not going to be just any house. Several of you have asked me to design what is called a company house or some people may call it a mill house, uh, things like that. What these houses are basically when companies would come in, whether it was a mining company or a textile company, and they needed to build housing for their workers around their mills or their mines or their facilities, they would build these very simple but very sturdy houses that the, that the workers and their families could live in. And to put how sturdy these houses are, a lot of them around the area where I'm from in the country, which is North Carolina, and you have a lot of textile mills, a lot of those houses still exist today from the turn of the 20th century all the way up to the 1940s. So those houses are very simple, but they are very, very sturdy. So we're gonna get to designing this thing right now. So let's get started. Now you guys know typically I just go to Google and get a feel for the building based on some stuff from Google Images. This time I was lucky enough to have my awesome subscriber Bill from Ontario send me this photo of some company houses near where he lives. So thank you Bill, I really really appreciate it and I'm going to base my house off of this photo. Let's hop into Tinkercad. Now you may notice that I've already started designing when the video starts. I accidentally started designing before hitting record. So I'll go ahead and tell you what I did. I basically eyeballed the roof line and used the roof shape that comes in Tinkercad to do that. And then I grouped it with a cube that I had done the math for and stretched it out to be one story. And you've seen me do this in other videos previously when I designed different things like the steel fabrication plant. Now, right now I'm not going for an exact replica because I'm factoring in a little bit of compression for modeling and scale and space. Next, I take a whole cube and I hollow out the entire model and then using a little bit of math that I had done, I get the rough size of the door openings and I go ahead and cut them out. I then design the doors using some whole cubes and some regular cubes and kind of just push them together until I got the right shape and size, but don't install them yet. Now for the siding. The siding on these things is typically large panels that you could put up quickly that made it very inexpensive to go ahead and wrap the house in siding. So for this, I'm randomly arranging and stretching out some cubes. I then duplicate the layers that I build vertically until I get enough height to be able to cover the entire house. I then turn them into whole cubes by pressing this button right up here. I then group them and turn them into whole cubes and use them to cut a stencil into another cube that I stretch to size. I then cut off their edges by grouping them with two whole cubes on the sides and I turn that entire shape into a whole cube and thin it out. Now I have my siding stencil. I duplicate several copies of this so that I can cover all four sides of the house and I make one extra that I set off the side in case I need to make more. I then highlight all of them and group them together. This cuts out the stencil on the wall. With the siding stenciling done, I can install my doors and I end up doing some small wall adjustments as well. Now I go through the process of creating windows, which is very similar to the creation of the doors. The way that I cut out the windows is I actually make them with a whole cube that isn't grouped together. And when I put them in place and I group them all together with the building itself, the whole cube will cut out the window spot. Once that is done, I make some corner trim. 
Now remember how I made an extra copy of the siding stencil? This is where it comes in handy because I'm going to be using it to make the roof detail as well because the roofs look very similar to the side panels. Now they're going to look different when you paint them, but what I do is I bring them over, stretch them out to size, duplicate them, and rotate them so that they fit on the roof. And then I group them together and you have your roof detail. I take a look at the chimneys in the photo and they look very simple like they are metal chimneys so I keep this chimney simple as well. I also put it in the middle of the house just like the photos. Now I make the foundation. The foundation is a simple cube that I stretch out to make the size including a little front deck at the front door and then I hole out the middle using a hole cube. I then fashion some stairs and a few other details like railings. And there's your model, ready to slice and ready to print. All right, we've designed our house. I put it to the slicer. Let's put it into the printer and get one out of there. All right guys, let's take a close look at this house. Now you'll notice that I have painted it with two colors. I did it with just some spray paint, nothing fancy. Um, I just used a little bit of tape and some spray paint to get this done. But uh, one thing I'm very happy about is this ended up being a single print, so no need for a separate base or roof. This is going to come together as is. Paint it, slap it on your layout. That is one thing that I am very, very happy about. And I'm also happy with how easy it was to print. It does take a little while to print, but it was very, very simple. So that is the first house that I've designed. I'm really hoping to have that on sale soon in the Etsy store. As you can see, the prints work great. I just gotta print them out. So thank you guys so much for watching. Special thank you to Mammoth Headwear, a sponsor of this episode. You can check them out in the description below. They make hats for big headed guys like myself and I absolutely love them. You can use this promo code right here to get 20% off your order. So thank you also to all of my patrons. They're listed right here. If you would like to become a patron, you can for as little as $1 a month. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Stay safe, be kind, and happy railroading. Hey everybody, it's Jimmy from the DIY and Digital and I want, I'm doing, I'm doing something today. <laughs> hey everybody, it's Jimmy from the DIY and Digital and today we are designing this, and I'm tackling it with these little in-scale, what am I saying?